Hello, this is John for VideoFort.com, bringing you another installment of Pac-Man Tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to make Pac-Man gobble up stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to do this keyframing animation. Uh, and we'll also work on having Pac-Man move around the game board that we created in the last episode. I don't know if you guys watched that, but, uh, this is the second video, if we're keeping track. All right, sit back, relax, and get ready to After Effects. Jump, 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 jump. Play the theme music. Okay, so we're gonna take our boards and character asset and drag it on down into our game comp that we've created from the last episode. And from there, once we have it in there, we're just gonna go ahead and right click on it and choose to pre-compose that. And we'll name it Pac-Man. We're going to leave all attributes in the game. We're going to say, OK. And then we're going to double click on this comp. And we've got our characters. So let's go ahead and zoom in over here. And when you're zooming in, if you hold down your Alt Option key, it'll zoom in onto your mouse's point. So it's a good little trick to know. Okay, so we've got our Pac-Man here. There's a bunch of different ones. We're going to focus on these three large ones. Don't worry about the other ones for now. They're for different stuff for later on purposes. So we're going to go ahead and go up to our rectangle tool, and we'll select that. And we're going to draw a rectangle over this whole Pac-Man, just this yellow circle here. Okay, that's pretty darn good. I'm going to make it nice and tight because that's how I like it. And then we're going to go to the select tool and tighten up this mask just a little bit. Select these two points. And to do that, you hold down the shift key when you're selecting. You can select multiple points. Tighten that mask up. That's good right there. And then we'll select our board and characters asset, and we're going to rename this one number one. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this. So if we select number one and go to edit, duplicate, we have number two now. Haha, it renamed it for us. How great. And we'll go ahead and drop that down. And we'll drop down our mask. We're going to select our mask here. And we're going to move it over to the left. So go ahead and move this over. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll keep it on the same path, which is what we want. And look at that. We've got our second Pac-Man. How wonderful. OK, and let's go ahead and tighten this up, too. Like I said, I like things tight. Just, uh, we'll create for cleaner animation, I think. And you just have more space to work with, ultimately. Now, we could go all out, and we could mask inside here as well. Um, if you guys want to do that, you can. And to add more points to this, you just go up to your pen tool. And when you hover over the line, you notice how it creates a plus key. So then you can just add like three points here. And go back to your select tool. You can move this point in. Now your Pac-Man kind of has a space when he's eating. Which, you know, can create for a better effect. You can also add in two more points. So we, let's just add in a bunch of points. 
So we're going to add in points here, 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 and here. And we'll tighten up this Pac-Man. So then we're just going to move in this point to about there. That point to there. That point to there. And that one to there. So now we've got like a super awesome Pac-Man. That's a pretty darn good mask for him. Sweet. So now, guess what? We're going to duplicate this one. Go up to Edit. Duplicate. And we're just going to move this mask over now. Just like we did before. I'm doing a shift click method right now. Which can sometimes take longer. So let's just go ahead and select that guy. And move him. And we're going to have to fix this mask a little bit. You notice our Pac-Man's a little wider mouth. So we're just going to select our pen tool, and when we hover over this point, we're going to hold down the command key, if you're on a Mac, and we'll just click on that, and that's going to take away a point, and that's going to take away a point. We'll go back to our select tool, and we'll just move these points, oops, command Z if you did that. We're going to click inside here, and then we can select these points. Now we've got an opened up Pac-Man. How easy. All right. So from here, we're going to need to change the anchor points on each one of these layers. So let's go ahead and start out on number one. We're going to zoom out. And we need to move this anchor point to the middle. So we'll go up to our pan behind tool. And we'll go ahead and move this to its center, or approximately. I mean, we're not going to be able to get exact, but we can get pretty darn close. I think that's acceptable. All right, then we're going to select number two. And we still have our pan behind tool selected. You know that because there's a little square with arrows pointing out in all different directions next to your icon. I don't know if you see that or not. And we'll go back and select the center point here. We'll just move it on over to the center point of this guy. And just about where the mouth opens. And I'm basing the center point off of these four points here. They kind of help you line it up visually. Uh, it's not perfect, but you know, it's, it's about there. So then we'll go ahead and select our last layer, number three, and move its center point. And voila! we have lined the anchor points to the center just about all right so now what we need to do is put these on top of each other so i'm going to make them all go on top of number one so we're going to take number two and we got to make sure we have our selection tool selected and we're just going to move it on top of number three. I'd say it's about there. And we can use our arrow keys to kind of make it better. You want it to blend in as much as possible. You notice when I move it around, it kind of gets blurred. So we want it to be the least blurry as possible. And I think that's about there. So you don't need to tinker around too long. Remember, 
Pac-Man's an 8-bit game. It's allowed to be a little goofy. From there, we'll go ahead and select number 3, and we'll do the same thing. We're just going to move it right on over, and if we hold the Shift key, it'll keep it in line when we're moving it, which is what we want. And I'm going to base it off of the back line. And let's go ahead and do the same for number two. So I'm going to turn off number three for a second. Let's select number two. And we're just going to line it up with the back of number one. I think it's right about there. All right, sweet. So now we've got our Pac-Man layered on top of each other. And if I click through these, you can kind of see it working. And we're actually going to put number one on top. So let's go ahead and drag number three to the bottom, number one to the top. Now we have it how we want it. Awesome. We're going to select all three of these. So we can either drag a box around them, or we can select one, hold down the shift key, and go down to the bottom, and that'll select all of them for us. From there, we're going to press the letter T on the keyboard, and that's going to bring up our opacity values, which is what we're going to be altering here. We're going to be bringing this all the way down, and then we'll go from there to here to back up. Now, the great thing is, is that we are never going to have to change this value. We're just going to set one keyframe here. And we're also going to turn on all the keyframes. So we're starting all of them. Then we're just going to move forward about three keyframes. We can do that by going up to the preview and going to the next frame button. And I'll just click three times. One, two, three. Now we're three frames ahead. And we're going to click this keyframe here. So we're going to add another keyframe because we want it to go from 100% to 100%. And then to the next keyframe, we'll drop it down to 0%. And the reason why we want to do that is we don't want there to be a smooth transition. We want it going from a full right to an open. So then from there, we'll go ahead and move forward another three frames. So one, two, three. We'll set a keyframe for number two at 100%. Then we'll move forward one more, and we'll drop it down to 0%. And now we've got a very basic motion. So we've got it just opening. Okay, now we need it to close. So we're just going to go forward another three. One, two, three. We'll set a keyframe for number two, because it's at 0%. Then we'll go forward one more. And we'll bring it back up to 100. Now, we're only going to do this a few more times, and then we're going to start copying and pasting. I'm going to zoom into this area. To do that, we'll just drag our time navigator over. And that's going to allow us to zoom in so we can see our keyframes a little bit better down here. From here, we're going to go forward another three keyframes. One, two, three. Here, we're going to add one up on number one. We'll go forward and we'll boost it up to 100. And we'll go forward again. One, two, three. Add a keyframe at number one. One. And drop it on down. All right, so now we've kind of set up number one and number two's keyframes. Okay, so now what I can do is I can start copying and pasting these keyframes so I don't have to do as much work. I just need to move it forward. So I'll go ahead and go forward three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to do Command C on the Mac. Control C if you're on a PC, and then I'll just paste them, which is Command V on a Mac or Control V if you're on a PC, and that pastes those keyframes. Actually, we'll highlight these ones. Command C, move forward three frames one, two, three. 
and paste them. All right, so I'll join you once I've finished keyframing my 30 seconds. One more important thing, if you don't have this set up yet, I highly recommend an autosave. To do that, you go up into your menu, your preferences, go all the way down to where it says autosave. I have it set to save every five minutes. You can have it set to however time length you want. And you can also set the maximum project versions. So mine's set at five. So it'll do five for every five minutes. So I essentially have the last 25 minutes saved. Good thing to know. All right, so back on track. We made it to our 30 seconds of keyframing. This is what all those keyframes look like. Isn't that fantastic? And we can move through and we can see our awesome animation. Now, an important thing to note, if I didn't state it, you want to make sure that you only copy and paste from the same layer. So only copy these keyframes and paste them in this layer. And you only want to copy and paste these keyframes for this layer. The reasoning behind that is if you look at our keyframes on the opening and ending points, that's what I'm going to call them, this set of keyframes starts at 100% and then ends at 100%, whereas this set of keyframes here starts at 0% and ends on 0%. So they would be mismatched. And we don't want that. But anyways, we've got our Pac-Man animated. I'm going to just center him a little bit. Let's go ahead and play through this. It's very fancy. Got him eaten. So cool. Let's go ahead and go into our game comp. And we can see our Pac-Man placed over in the left here. Now let's go ahead and zoom in on him move our board over a little bit and I'm moving I got that hand guy by pressing down the shift key and that allows me to bring up the hand and I can move the board around how I want so I'm going to change the anchor point for our Pac-Man here so with our Pac-Man comp selected we'll go up to the pan behind tool and we'll go ahead and change our center point over to here And we can zoom in just a little bit. I think our center point's about there. And we're also going to put a mask around our comp here. Reasoning for that is it's just going to clean things up for later on. So we'll select our rectangle tool. And with our Pac-Man comp selected, we'll go ahead and draw a mask around our Pac-Man. And we'll go ahead and tighten up the mask, as always. Boom. We can now move our Pac-Man, and we can put him in here. And actually, I think we'll put him right down into there. So we've placed him on our board. And if we hit the Play button, I'll click on the game board. If we hit our RAM Preview button, we can see our Pac-Man is eating on the board now. So, in the next episode of our Pac-Man series, I'll show you how to get the Pac-Man to move through all these little pathways, which will be very, very fun. Uh, look forward and stay tuned for that. Make sure to click the subscribe button over to the right there if you're enjoying these tutorials. That'll help keep you up to date with our newest stuff that we're putting out. And uh, go to videofort.com and check out some of our awesome stock footage over there. You can use it to create some really awesome After Effects projects. All right. Stay tuned, guys, for the next episode where I'll show you how to do some more motion graphics getting Pac-Man to move around the game board. All right. Later, guys.